absolute value of C squared times the absolute value of B J squared. Okay? So this is where I get to ask and see if anyone's paying attention. Uh, so uh, right here it looks like I have a B squared A squared, or A, sorry, B squared A. That's the first term, right? The sum of the A J squared. What about this next term? How can I, or let's skip the next term. How about the, this term first? How can I simplify this? Well, this thing here looks like, C. what does this look like? C. So it's C times C bar. So this third term looks like B, C times C bar, so C squared. What about, so the last term we already have simplified down to C squared times B. So what about this middle term? So you don't see it very obviously. This looks like C except for what? Has a complex conjugate of everything. So this is in fact C bar, right? If I took C bar, it spreads over all the terms and then you can split it up to the individuals. So this is C bar. So this looks like BC C bar, which is again another B C squared. So this all turns into um, B squared A minus uh, B C squared. Yeah, I told you completely opaque. Everyone's like, I can follow the symbols, what the hell. But yeah, but the point is we're done, actually. Because, or this also looks like uh, B times B, A, B minus C squared. This is positive. This is or non-negative, right? And B is non-negative. So, so there's two possibilities. Either B is 0, in which case if B were 0, so it would be the equation I'm trying to prove. This equation in terms of what I'm writing over there is c squared and absolute value is less than a b. Right? This is what I'm trying to prove. Yeah? Or equal. I bet. That equal sign is extremely important. Um, if b were 0, this is sort of obvious because if b is all 0, then all these are 0. So 0 is less than or equal to 0. So we're done if b is 0. So we can assume b is not 0. So if b is not 0, this is positive, so we can divide by it. Which gives us that, again, ab minus c squared is greater than or equal to 0 over down. Because it's what we wanted. Make sense? So the two cases are b is 0, we're done because it's obvious. And if b is not 0, you just divide, you're done. Problem solved. Yep, I don't know. If it, I just wanted to show you. This is actually really useful in quality. It'll come up at least twice that I can think of the stuff I want to do. Yep. Are there any questions? I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with chapter one if no one else has any more questions. We have about 12 minutes. <clears throat> so I'll first take, are there questions about anything I said today? Are you guys aware that you're in a classroom right now? <laughs> Just checking, because I mean, it's cool if you guys want to be quiet or don't have questions, but I think, I, I know analysis at first they also to put people to sleep. I mean, I, I think I'm guilty of falling asleep in my first analysis class too. So I wouldn't hold it against you. But um, so if we're done for now, what I would like to do is I would like you guys to look at the uh, worksheet number three. This is the one where I gave you uh, four sets and I asked you to find the supremums and the infimums of these sets. I would like to start with that. We'll try to get through that today. And then tomorrow we'll start maybe, there's a few problems on there I want to look at and I want to see if you guys can just do the basic stuff on that. So you don't have a car right